Good evening, dear Kuwait television viewers, and welcome to another new episode of your weekly program, Kuwait in 30 Minutes. The English News and Political Programs Department has prepared a variety of reports that highlight the main events that have recently taken place across Kuwait. Our committee team of reporters is constantly engaged in numerous fields with the objective of keeping you, dear viewers, aware of the latest regulations and policies. Our aim is to help you obtain information rather on the latest developments at the local scene. So stay tuned for more coming your way this evening. The Society for History and Archaeology was sponsored by Deputy Prime Minister and Defense Minister Sheikh Nasser Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah held their 19th scientific conference in Kuwait where archaeology experts from all around the GCC have gathered to discuss their findings and theories. Here is more on this report with Salah Al Abedi. The conference looks into all planning skills and scientific methods in applying all aspects of information and human resources management in the most efficient ways possible, as they have classified humans to be the most valuable asset in every country and the source of advancement and economic growth. Therefore, successful planning is the path to success in all institutions and organizations, as well as the importance of placing workers in suitable positions prior to examining their skills and abilities to be able to reach the desired goals set by the management teams. It is more with this report. Actually, this is the, the gathering of all historians and people who work in archaeology in, in the GCC country. This is the major organization, uh, organization that gathered all of the scholars in these fields. Uh, it's been uh, 19 years since we started this gathering. It started from Kuwait as an organization. And uh, now all the GCC contribute directly to this uh, organization. Why this meeting is important? Actually, it's the meeting where all the scholars will contribute papers related to the GCC countries, uh, history, archaeology, also to celebrate our achievement in the GCC vis-a-vis -vis the the archaeological uh, excavation that now took place in the uh, GCC. As you know, most of the planning for the future, or the Kuwaiti, for example, view for uh, 2035, uh, or uh, the Saudi, for example, 2020, or all the planning for the future in the GCC. I'm very pleased to be here in Kuwait to participate in the 19th scientific annual meeting for the Society of uh, History and Archaeology in the Arabian Gulf states. Uh, this uh, scientific, uh, uh, scientific uh, conference um, is uh, very important for the GCC country and the Arabian Peninsula and the Arab history and culture. Uh, we are participating with different uh, topics dealing with prehistory of Arabia, Arabia before Islam, Arabia during Islamic period, uh, tackling uh, uh, points on archaeology, uh, culture, uh, modern history, uh, manuscripts, uh, Arabic civilizations. Our society considered to be one of the strongest and the most important society dealing with history and archaeology in the Arab world. We are here with the IT Summit for the GCC Society for Archaeology and History have met. Sahil Abadi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. The Kuwait Annual Jewelry Expedition has launched in the Kuwait International Fair. Under the sponsorship of the Minister of Commerce and Industry, His Excellency Mr. Khaled Arodan. Here's more on the exhibition. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry have attended the opening for the Kuwait Annual Jewelry Expedition on the Minister's behalf, which took place in Kuwait International Fair. 
where jewelry merchants from all over the world have showcased their products. Here's more with this report. About the exhibition, we uh, we are we were pleasure to open the exhibition uh, in behalf of uh, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, and it was the uh, first time this number of the companies uh, ca to participate in this exhibition, and we hope uh, they make success and uh, um, more be uh, m more selling and more more uh, as. Uh, companion to find uh, from uh, market of Kuwait. This is our goal and our goal is to uh, make uh, Kuwaiti market is the, the first in the market uh, in the in the region now. Uh, yeah it's a jewelry exhibition it, have, it happens every April from the 23rd till the 28th of the month uh, and it's from it, it's uh, two uh, sessions in the morning and in the evening we test for the diamonds and gold. For the diamonds, we see the clarity and color. For the gold, we stamp it to it should, should check the carrot of the uh, gold, if it's really gold or not. And that's it. I hope you guys come and see the exhibition. It's very nice and it's very useful. Uh, and here we, you can see a lot of like uh, sets of jewelry and diamonds and gold and from all over the world. The Ministry of Commerce and Industry have set up testing facilities in the expedition to ensure for the consumers that the products they are purchasing are genuine, as well as spreading awareness about purchasing the precious metals and stones. The Sahel Abadi reporting to you for quite in 30 minutes. The Assad Institute for Knowledge and Scientific Research hosted Ibtikar Competition for Knowledge and Scientific Research under sponsorship by His Highness Demir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, where participants from all over the GCC have competed. Here is more in this report. The Ebtikar Competition for Knowledge and Scientific Research was sponsored by His Highness the Amir, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, where young inventors and researchers from all over the GCC countries have participated in this competition to showcase their inventions. Here's more with this report. Uh, my project is uh, recycling the microwave. Um, from the microwave, we've got four innovations. The first one is the main one is. Uh, um, uh, the electromagnetic uh, uh, protected bed and the second one is the auto reading uh, light which is also um, um, uh, uh, um, environmental and uh, the third one is the um, uh, egg shielder and the, sec uh, the fourth one is the plate, we call it a plate because uh, we got, we got from, the t uh, from the microwave plate and we made uh, a new uh, project from it. And our project is called the Zygomatic Bone Sensor. Our project is used to help disabled people do their daily life tasks. Um, uh, we were inspired by Stephen Hawking and um, the prosthetic arm to make our project and I hope we can use it in the future. Uh, we got the idea by searching for substitute sources for energy, uh, unlike the usual ones, uh, like the solar panels or uh, windmills. Uh, our idea is about uh, piezoelectric cells that when you uh, insert pressure on them, it pr uh, produces uh, and generates electricity. So with complicated um, procedures inside our device, um, we found that we can actually use this as a source instead of the other things. The Sahel Abadi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. The American Business Council in Kuwait hosted its speakers series in Jumeirah Hotel. The theme of the lecture was on training and simulations requirements for security and defense in Kuwait and the Middle East with key speaker Frank Bilinas. In attendance was guest of honor Lieutenant General Hashim Rafai, Under Secretary of the Kuwait National Guard. A reporter has more.
The state of Kuwait hosted the 25th Arab Industrial Development and Mining Organization General Assembly. The organization, established back in 1988 and operates under the supervision of the Arab League, aims to achieve quality and productivity in the industrial and mining sectors and encourages creativity, innovation and knowledge seeking. It calls for enhancing technology and attract investments, which will return in creating more job opportunities. In order to achieve the desired objectives, the organization works in coordination with the Arabic ministries, governmental bodies, and similar minded organizations concerned with meeting the challenges and development of the industrial sector on both regional and international levels. The organization managed to achieve significant success during the leadership of Kuwaiti engineer Adel Sayer, as the state of Kuwait contributed financially and technically to the organization within the framework of its commitment to the principle of supporting a joint Arab action in all fields. Kuwait made remarkable initiatives to promote economic and social development in the Arab world. The most important was the initiative of His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah al Ahmed al Jabal al Subah at the Arab Economic and Social Summit held in Kuwait in 2009, which resulted in the establishment of a fund to support and finance small and medium sized projects with a capital of 500 million US dollars. The Sahel Abadi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. The American Business Council in Kuwait hosted its speaker series in Jumeirah Hotel. The theme of the lecture was on training and simulation requirements for security and defense in Kuwait and the Middle East with key speaker Frank Bilanas. In attendance was guest of honor Lieutenant General Hashim Arifai, Under Secretary of the Kuwait National Guard. Our reporter Tislima Rasul has more. American Business Council Kuwait welcomed Frank Bolinus as the key speaker for the April Speaker Series. Distinguished guests included the guest of honor, Lieutenant General Hashim Al Rafai, Under Secretary of the Kuwait National Guard. Mr. Bolinus is a highly decorated retired combat veteran with more than 20 years of service in the U.S. Army. He has served as the director for six military schools and courses training U.S. and international students and as a doctrine program manager where he wrote eight books and underwrote several others for the U.S. Department of Defense to include on anti-terrorism, training, gunnery, survival and strategics. He also served as a SWAT instructor and advisor to senior officers and leaders. Mr. Bolinus has conducted more than a thousand combat and high-risk operations worldwide to include counter-terrorism, counter-narcotics, hostage rescue and combat operations. He also conducted operations on four international borders. The relation between uh, Kuwait and uh, U.S. is uh, a very old relation uh, in all different fields. Uh, if in specific, um, Kuwait National Guard uh, uh, recently start to increase that relations, especially in uh, exchanging um, uh, the equipment and uh, also participating in consulting companies um, in, in order to increase the awareness of security uh, that National Guard uh, uh, play in Kuwait. Uh, also, National Guard, um, they have a strong relation uh, with the U.S. Uh, since we secure the, um, uh, the U.S. Uh, United States Embassy, and this is, um, will result in more uh, uh, cooperation between uh, National Guard and uh, uh, the United States. Uh, from the old uh, relation we experienced with them, uh, the simulators uh, business, where we uh, experience our scenarios and uh, also we try to uh, practice our missions through this uh, modern systems that uh, we uh, have it uh, through the um, very uh, experienced companies uh, such as Lockheed Martin for almost um, now over 20 years and we keep increasing this in order to ensure that all our tasks that uh, National Guard uh, conduct is right. 
Uh, tonight, I'm going to be discussing security and defense in the Middle East and predominantly focusing on the training and simulations aspect and what it looks like today, what is needed in the region today, and what we forecast in the near future to not only facilitate what the businesses should be focusing on and help them get focused on it and whatever, but also to help uh, the governments understand what direction they're going in and why they're going in those directions. Primarily, it's about uh, the integration of the different ministries being able to work together and in the simulations tools that facilitate their abilities to do this, the realism that those provide and the ability of those systems to support multiple agencies simultaneously so that they can deal with whatever the potential threat is in the future. After retiring from the U.S. Army, Mr. Bernas served as the director of the International Counterinsurgency Training Program for the 26th Country Coalition operating in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mr. Bolanus then served as a senior advisor for the Kuwait National Guard for more than eight years. He supported the development and integration of a world-class simulation center, now a model for the Middle East. Mr. Bolanus also served as a senior security advisor to the Kuwait National Assembly for a short time. Mr. Bolanus is currently the president and CEO of Falcon Desert International, a general trading and contracting company based in Kuwait. Frank Bolanus was speaking about what drives training and simulations requirements for security and defense in Kuwait and the Middle East for today and the near future. This evening, the American Business Council in Kuwait hosted its April lecture series with the theme of training and simulation requirements required in defense in Kuwait. This is Tislim Russell for Kuwait in 30 minutes. Under the patronage and attendance of His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmed Al Sabah, the Araya Ballroom in Marriott Courtyard held the opening ceremony of the Kuwaiti Scientific Science and Engineering Club exhibition. Reporter Tislim Rasul has more. Under the patronage and presence of His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmed Al Sabah, the Kuwait Science and Engineering Competition was inaugurated by the Kuwaiti Science Club. The program is sponsored by the Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences, the Ministry of Social Affairs and Middle East University, Ministry of Education and in Strategic Partnership with Kuwait University, Kuwait Institute for Practical Research and the General Authority for Applied Education and Training. Uh, here in the Science Club, we're just trying to make one of the biggest science fairs in Kuwait and enhancing this kind of science fairs uh, all around and uh, you can see all the schools, it's high school level, um, getting them involved in their, in their projects, believing in themselves. And uh, actually, the winners from this science fair, we try to get them all around in science fairs all around the world, uh, get them to participate with others, I mean, in a different level. This is our aim, and we hope that science fairs will take uh, um, more recognition in Kuwait, um, through all the schools, uh, when they start uh, doing that, I think it will enhance our science fair and get everyone involved in, uh, in what's going on here and be aware of the importance of the science fairs. And, uh, and let's hope uh, it works. That's the sixth year. Um, every year we're getting more uh, people around and more people interesting, interested in, uh, in actually visiting and participating. This year we have a lot of people asking and, and uh, we hope that the numbers will double next year. Talal Jassim Al Harafi, chairman of the Al Alami Scientific Club, expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser Al Muhammad Al Ahmed Al Sabah for his unlimited support for the national program for the care of young researchers, stressing that scientific research is a key part of human development. I'm here today uh, for refereeing. Uh, uh, these projects. I'm really happy to see uh, this uh, kind of uh, effort uh, from uh, the students. Uh, 
I have seen a lot of projects. Uh, most of them are promising. I uh, hope they can continue this in the, in the near future. Yeah. The projects participating in the Kuwait Science and Engineering Competition are subject to finite evaluation by the Arbitration Committee, which includes 50 arbiters from various scientific disciplines. They are distinguished professors and academics from Kuwait University, Kuwait Institute for Scientific Research and Public Authority for Applied Education and Training, with the joint project being evaluated by four arbiters specialized in the same scientific field. The largest exhibition of students' research and projects under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser al Muhammad al Ahmed al Sabah will have winners from 22 fields that will be selected, as well as winners of its grand prize at the closing ceremony to be held in the presence of the Minister of Information. This evening, the Kuwait Science Club launched the opening ceremony of the Kuwait Science Exhibition. Throughout the evening, there was a variety of projects on display by a variety of students from several schools across Kuwait. Reporting from the Al Raya Ballroom, this is Tislim Russell for Kuwait in 30 minutes. A workshop recently took place at the Kuwait Society of Engineers entitled World of Financial Trading. The discussion was led by technical analyst and senior training officer Mohsen Khan who works for Sword Capital. The workshop was attended by individuals who are keen to enhance their knowledge in international trading or establish a career in the international trading. Reporter Ghinwa Jabouri has more. A workshop that recently took place at the Kuwait Society of Engineers about the world of financial trading delivered by Mohsen Khan covered extensive information about financial trading with the objective of offering individuals who are interested in financial trading important information that could better guide and enlighten them about the financial market. I would uh, respectfully a little bit disagree with it. Actually, I believe uh, the people in Kuwait, they are interested in financial trading, but they are not, uh, the right resources are not available. So our company is going to be the first one in the whole Middle East to provide those kind of educational resources. We'll be, we provide technical analysis and we conduct free of charge workshops for our clients and prospects so they can understand the financial markets and we give them maximum time to understand these. The workshop discussed the advantages and disadvantages of trading in international financial markets, while also informing people that there is a financial career in this field that exists at an affordable investment and does not require any formal education or any technical background. A, uh, financial uh, education is very important for these people because a lot of people have been asking questions about the, how to trade international-wise. I'm not talking about the Kuwait stock markets. I'm talking about international stock markets and the crypto currencies. I mean, these people are asking us, and they said, how to start with and how to do, gain money out of it. I said, it's very easy and it's very simple. The only thing is to introduce to you these kind of things and uh, to know about it and how to deal uh, with the, these kind of financial uh, uh, institutes and uh, financial like, uh, cryptocurrencies because it will be worldwide now and everybody thinking about it and everybody is dealing with it, that's why. Sword Capital was founded in 2006 with an international license. The company has established its position as a leader in changing trading on international stock exchanges by providing a reliable and user-friendly trading environment based on the most advanced platform supported by strong financial institutions. Sword Capital, a sea of knowledge when it comes to online international trading. From the Kuwait Society of Engineers, I'm Gemma Jaburi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes.
The Canadian Embassy in Kuwait recently hosted the largest ever delegation of Canadian health and educational organizations to visit the country. The visit included a high level of group of 23 Canadian institutions offering specialized services and expertise in health-related education and training. An open house was held at the Sheraton Hotel, Kuwait, at which professionals providing health services, education in Kuwait were invited to meet with various organizations. Our reporter Ghanwa Jabouri brings us more. A Canadian health and education delegation recently visited Kuwait to discuss potential future collaboration pertaining to health education and services. Kuwait and Canada enjoy strong and growing bilateral relations that are well founded in shared principles and values. Canadians contribute to Kuwait's economy and society with a wide range of services including healthcare and related education. Well, our delegation is a group of Canadian faculties of medicine, schools of nursing, uh, colleges for health professions, associations, companies, and uh, academic health centers interested in training uh, top flight healthcare personnel. And we're here to meet with agencies, departments, and institutions in Kuwait who are looking to build the capacity and the quality of healthcare services here in this country, which is expanding very, very quickly. Well, first, we're not starting from zero. There are established relationships between Kuwait and Canada in education. So, for example, there are 120 Kuwait doctors doing advanced specialized training in Canadian programs right now. And we have existing linkages in education. What we're trying to do is to build on those and to expand them from not to just include physicians, but nurses, uh, health professionals like laboratory technicians, paramedics, and others that are important to giving top flight care. The objective of the Canadian delegation is to meet with health and medical representatives in Kuwait to establish connections, which could potentially result in building relationships and ultimately result in contracts and agreements to provide services and support in Kuwait in the health education sector. Well, I think this, first of all, this is a fantastic day. This is Canada's largest trade mission ever to Kuwait, largest trade mission ever to this country. And it signifies the importance uh, our government and, and the country of Canada is placing in the GCC region and most specifically in, Quebec, in uh, Kuwait. And I think um, in health professions, education and training, we have a lot to offer. Uh, Canada's got a lot to offer the world. And I think our expertise in medicine, nursing and allied health will be on display here in the many years to come. A lot of the relationships and strong people-to-people -people ties that we've built today will go on for many years to come. And I look forward to a long uh, collaboration between our two uh, great countries. The visit is indicative of the genuine interest that exists in strengthening Kuwaiti-Canadian ties and collaboration in the essential field. Canada's International Education Health Forum helping Kuwait to further and develop its health system. From the Sheraton Hotel, I'm Geno Jaburi, reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. This was our final report. Unfortunately, this brings us to the conclusion of tonight's episode of Kuwait in 30 Minutes. We hope to see you again same time next week. Our highly dedicated team of correspondents are constantly out on the field searching for reports that matter most to you. So thank you for joining us tonight and see you next week with more exclusive reports. Have a good night.